get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Einstein Bagels, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, freelancers, coaches, dentists, anyone working one-on-one with clients, shift from just trading time for dollars to from one-on-one client work to one-to-many work. So go to rise25.com, learn more, download the free dream product ladder, which is basically a business plan on one sheet of paper that helps you see gaps in untapped revenue. Companies like Disney, Apple, Sporting Industry, they all use versions of the product ladder. Go to rise25.com. I am excited. Today we have Albert Swantner, founder of Sway Water and Bohemian Innovation. Bohemian Innovation has worked with companies such as Adidas, Microsoft, Fox, and many more. And they have a brilliant four-step process, which we will talk about, that helps companies create cutting-edge products or technologies. And you know they talk about problem definition, prototyping, building, and then, of course, Albert, changing the world comes last, right? <laughs> Sway water is a handcrafted, real fruit-infused water made from purified water and real ingredients. So that means no syrups, no concentrates or additives. Sway can be found in over 150 locations around Texas, including Snap Kitchen, Central Market, Royal Blue Grocery, and now Albertsons. Congrats on that. And I checked out some of their delicious flavors, you know, mango, grapefruit, peach, and many others. They all look very good, Albert. So thanks for joining me. Thank you. Excited to be here. So I wanted to start with Bohemian because that that precedes Sway Water and the I was looking at Adidas, right? You've worked with Adidas, and what's a cool project you did with Adidas? Yeah, so for Adidas, what we did is we worked with um, one of their athletes, Derek Rose. Yeah. I say and that because so, I'm in Chicago, so I, I knew that you worked with Derek Rose. Yeah, that's right. Back, you know, back when Derek Rose was Derek Rose, right? Um, and you know, he wanted to kind of more engage with his brand of shoes in the stores that they were sold. Yeah. And so we worked with Adidas to develop this kind of game. And so what you did is you try to see if you were faster than Derek Rose. And so um, a company took I this giant it. screen game around and you tried to like tap on him in the screen as he was moving. And, you know, there was like a big competition with all the stores and the highest person got a free pair of shoes signed by Derek Rose. And so just like a cool way for him to engage mm. with fans on kind of a different level in a more fun, engaging way. So how yeah. did you come up with that? So we didn't come up with the idea. We are like the executioners. Mm. So they said, you know, we want to do some sort of, you know, mobile game. And so we were like, okay, you know, we could do something like this or like this. And we bought a giant touchscreen and prototyped it for them. And it just kind of, it kind of fit in. And so a lot of the ideas were theirs. And they said, we don't know how to do this. Can you please bring us a technology? And we wrote it all. Um, and this was, you know, pretty early. So they wanted us to use Flash, and we said, let's try to use this new HTML5 and how it works. And so it was like a big HTML5 project, which was really fun at the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you sort of have to take people's dream or what their idea is and bring it to reality, essentially, right? And it's probably some of it you can do, and some of it you have to change, or some of it you've been doing this for so long, you may have an opinion, well, this isn't going to be this is going to be attractive to the user too, right? That's exactly right. I mean, our goal is to help you create a successful product, not just, you know, make exactly what you want. So a lot of times our feedback is tweaks based on, I mean, we've been doing this for seven years. So we have a lot of experience helping companies launch products and watch them fail or succeed and companies get sold. And so we have a good idea of how to help you out of the gate be a little more successful with your end goals, just based on our experience. Yeah, and so this this game is a great example. We were like, let's make something mass producible that's easy, that's gonna be easily repeatable, but also like a fun leaderboard. So kind of bringing our insights into how games work, how people communicate, how we've done a lot of installations, how typically installations are run down and what works in that environment. And so we kind of brought that to the table and said, you know, this is something that we can do that meets your goals that would be really successful. And it was. So, Albert, how did Adidas find you? 
<laughs> um, we were found, we had a, a joint agency. So we worked with a larger agency um, that was like the creative head on it. And so they really worked with Adidas. And so again, we are their kind of tech executioner team. Right. And that, that's really how we fit into most of our companies is they're like the marketing heads or the advertising and we just kind of bring the tech and the tech perspective and like how to run a project. And that's, that's the role that we fill yeah. in these companies. Yeah, I wanted you to talk about your process a little bit because you have to do this over and over with a lot of a variety of companies, right? And I'm just curious when you onboard them, that's what I was saying, you know, you talk about, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that means, the problem definition, then you prototype it, then you build it, then change your world. When someone comes to you, how do you start that relationship? What do you do? For us, it's, I mean, we work, we really do work with companies in the whole spectrum. And so a lot of our companies are startups that say, hey, we have a very limited budget. We have very limited time. Yeah, How do handcuff we handcuff us some more? Like we don't have yeah. enough handcuffed technology. Yeah. Just Let's make it hard as possible for you. <laughs> um, and that, that's totally, that's great. We love, we love startups. We love working with companies and seeing them grow. I mean, a lot of our companies started with an idea and now have hundreds of thousands of daily active users, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so, so for us, it's like finding which bucket of ours they fit into, right? Sometimes it's, a very tight scope so that we can do the entire set of work in four weeks and it's as cheap as possible and get it out the door. Sometimes we have some room to explore. Um, so it really is down to like budget, time, how difficult it is and helping them mold their idea into something that's unique. You know, a lot of people come to us and say, hey, I want to make a photo app or I want to make a, an app to find my friends at bars. And it's kind of helping find the core of that idea and turning it into You're something. You're like, it's actual. called Gmail. No, no, <laughs> it already exists. <laughs> yeah. It all exists. Here are eight apps we've done out of that thing. Um, but helping them find the nugget that they liked and turn it into something actually unique. Yeah, so tell yeah. me about what's the time when someone came to you and the whole idea really shifted because of that process. They came to you, maybe they just wanted whatever it was, a photo sharing app, and it turned into something completely different because of the, the interaction and defining the problem. Sure. So we... Uh, we recently met a client that wanted to do a, a photo sharing app. And it was essentially, you know, you could take 24 photos of an event like a roll of film, right? And so we've done projects pretty similar to that and had them pitched to us many times because that's like a good first idea for someone, right? And so what I kind of, what I took from them was that they liked this idea of like photo curation and kind of scarcity. And that was really what they liked about the idea, not necessarily you know, the 24 photos mm -hmm. and this camera roll and all that. And so what we did is we helped them pivot into where we could take a giant set of images from your Dropbox, use our, use some AI cleverness to pull out the best 24 images, right? Mm. So you can say, I want to take the top 24 images from my trip to Bali last month. Interesting. And it would say, okay, based That's on cool. photos are cool, here are, we think, the, the top images from this trip, right? So yeah. kind of the problem they were trying to solve and... I think solved it in a much more clever way. So that that's not out yet, but that's, that's a like, cool problem for like professional photographers, right? They probably take thousands of photos. Yeah. If there's a way of curating, so they don't have to spend hours going through every one, that would be really valuable. Yeah, and so the AI basically we fed it photos that are good photos, and so now it's kind of good at like picking good photos, which is kind of a cool thing, right? And so that's an example how you take the nugget of the idea and say, okay. Here's how you can make it really mm. cutting edge. And some people will be like, wow, that actually is cool. What do, you, that what do you find going on with AI now? I mean, you're probably more on the cutting edge than most people. What's coming? Or what are you guys working on that has AI components that most people probably would be blown away with that's even in, in existence right now? Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff we're working on, specifically um, some stuff around audio and source separation. Um, like some of the stuff with uh, image classification and not just saying that this is a dog, but saying like this is a good photo of a dog. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we're really implementers. And so we're thinking about in user implementations of AI. So like the companies that come to us and say, hey, what do we do with AI? Being able to say, you know, here's something that you can do that directly relates to your business. So we're not like researchers coming up with new search algorithms, right? We're saying, okay, how do we take TensorFlow and some of the Google tools available and actually make it applicable to this startup and this startup and this person's right. actual business? Because we need to deliver results. That, that's why people hire us, you know? Right. Well, that's what I'm, I mean, it's real world applications for AI. I can see the photo. Are there other ones? Like, what are, what's another example of, 
a usage where you've taken something like that and you've actually brought it to a real world use? So one thing we're working on is, like I said, audio source separation. And so someone brought to us the idea that during conference calls, it's hard sometimes to hear. There's a lot of background noise. And so we're training an AI that essentially learns what your voice sounds like and how your voice wave patterns work. Mm. And so what we're now able to do is filter out everything that's not your voice, right? And so we can essentially take crowded audio and signal out what you sound like and then only hear yourself. Mm. And so taking this really cool AI concept of you know pattern matching and how we do source separation to actually, okay, now there's an app where um, conference calls are made super clear because your audio is the only audio that's heard. So that's kind of something hmm. else. I mean, it's interesting the the breadth of companies you've worked with, right? I said Adidas, you have the Dairy Farmers of Canada and then <laughs> Charity Miles. So yep. what could you possibly do with the Dairy Farmers of Canada? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a fun job. That was in um, Vancouver. They're trying to get people to drink chocolate milk as kind of a recovery drink. And so what we did is we made these smart vending machines um, where you would you would text into a phone number and you would get a free sample of chocolate milk and you would kind of opt into these milk promotions and hmm. trivia games and stuff like that. Yeah, so they, they traveled this vending machine that we wrapped and like completely retrofitted the inside to where it only took texting as currency and so it would really? dispense milk and texted it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so our business really is broken into two parts. It's like the fun work that doesn't pay anything, which is, you know, all these cool interactive installations that are really exciting and get us jazzed. And then it's like our everyday app work that really pays the bills, that drives revenue, that drives – that's kind of like yeah. our two businesses and it yeah. keeps interested in what we're doing. Yeah, we'll talk about that because you are working with TIFFs, uh, TIFFs Treats, right, and doing some of their applications. What kind of stuff do you have to do for them? Yeah, so for them, you know, they're having a big push in the technology sector. Um, they need mobile applications to kind of fill out their delivery side of their business. So right now, all the ordering is done online. And so they came to us and they said, hey, we need a mobile app that can track orders and you can see where they're going and that type of stuff. And so we said, sure, we've done a lot of mapping. We do apps every day. Um, and so we did their iOS app, which just launched about two weeks ago. Hmm. Um, and it's a full ordering, mapping, entire system. And so for them, we're their app team. You know, they have a server team in place. They have a couple in-house resources. And we're like the extra kick to get this work over the edge and released. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's a, it's a cookie delivery, right? Yes. They're an amazing, awesome company. Um, they're, growing, they're growing amazingly fast. So it's, it's an honor to be able to work with them. So that's who should be working with Bohemian that isn't right now. Who needs like a redesign of their app? <laughs> yeah, everyone, like, everyone. Because <laughs> that's that's where things are going, right? I mean, if you look at like Waze or Uber or any of these apps, I mean, it's all really probably complex technology. I'm assuming, right? The stuff that you guys do. Yeah, I mean, and and really, it's that next generation of companies that. Have on that have websites and really big businesses that are looking to get into mobile is kind of where we would fit in. You know, it's like a lot of delivery and for us, not so much mobile app startups because that is a really really hard business. But someone who has a business who needs to be on mobile, that's that's who we really like to work yeah. with because they have a business. You yeah, know? the primary business is not downloads of their app. It's service. which is a really hard business. Yeah. You know? What have you seen that, I mean, you probably give a lot of um, advice on, because when you create the app, you want people using it, on actually getting people to engage in usage and gamification. What are some of the things that people should think about to gamify or to get, increase their, the, the users using it? Yeah, I mean, my number one piece of advice is, are you sure you really want to do this? No. I mean, it's, it's very, very, very hard. Um, one of the best examples that we have that we are still working with is Charity Miles. And so the way that we're bringing more of gamification to that is by, you know, have letting people earn badges the more they exercise. And the more you exercise, the more money is given to charity. So it's kind of like this reinforcing cycle of, hey, I'm getting a little bit of reward, but also I'm doing something for a cause I believe in, and that's driving that business. And so that's kind of a little bit of the gamification. But for us, really – Mobile apps have to have a business besides advertising. That's a very, very hard thing to do without yeah. millions of eyeballs, which is not easy now. I mean, people don't – I think there's a stat that the average person downloads zero apps per month on their phone. So you, you have to fight that, and it's very, very hard. 
Yeah. What are your favorite apps that you have on yours? I, I'm, a, I'm a functional person. So, you know, Hangouts, Skype, Gmail, um, Flipboard, CNN, Washington Post. And I use it for like reading the news and I don't have a lot of time to be on my phone. Right. You're <laughs> creating course, apps. You don't have time to be on apps. Right? That's right. You know, I'll, and I'll, I'll download new stuff and see what it looks like, what design patterns are cool. Yeah. Um, but I don't spend a ton of time. On so, apps. Albert, Sway Water. When does Sway, what's the, the idea from Sway Water? Sure. So, you know, um, Bohemian is great. I love letting people like seeing their dreams succeed and being part of what they're doing. And, you know, being an entrepreneur myself, there's something really appealing about a business I don't understand. And so for us, that was that CPG, Mm. Um, you know, and I I know the pitfalls in tech, so it was kind of daunting to start a tech company, but looking at CPG, I don't know how hard that is when I started. So we jumped, we jumped in. Why, Um, why, why, what was the reason? Because you can do anything. Yeah. Why did you decide to jump into that? So my wife and I went on our honeymoon and we, you know, actually got to relax and we had some cucumber water. And then I just started thinking about kind of the food cycle and how things are produced and what we're putting in our bodies. And so, you know, we had our first kid about a year after that. And you start thinking, like, what is my kid drinking? What are the options? You know, like, what are natural flavors? How are these actually created in a lab? And so for us, it was Mm. just like, I think we can do this better, you know? So just incrementally taking crazy step after crazy step until it turned into a real business Mm. about – 18 months ago. What was the first iteration of the product? Were you just <laughs> messing around in the kitchen? or? Basically, yeah. The first iteration, we got um, about 10,000 of these flip top bottles from China. So you went um, all out. It's not like... You... All out. I don't, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it. Okay. Um, a commercial kitchen space and we got a giant pot that had a spigot at the bottom and we just started crafting drinks and started selling. So within... Two months of starting, we were on store shelves. Really? You know, not in the best packaging, in the best place, but it took time to iterate, you know? So you just decided and you're like, we're just going to order 10,000 bottles and do this. That was thing. a price break. You got a price break at 10,000, so <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so what were the first flavors? That were, I mean, did you test it before you you know, created it? Were you testing in smaller batches? We were testing a smaller batch of the friends and family for a few months, mm-hmm. um, and then we started doing the farmer's market. And so mm. our first flavor, and still our best-selling flavor, is cucumber lime. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. That was like the original. It's just cucumber is really refreshing, and cucumbers are really hard taste to fake. Um, like cucumber natural flavors don't really taste like a cucumber, and so mm. we found the only way to do it is using real cucumbers. And yeah. so still our best seller. That's 35% of our revenue, that one single flavor. Mm. Um, yeah. So farmer's market, what do you do to sell there? I mean, this is different from working with Adidas and doing technology. Now you're at a farmer's market selling bottled water. That's right. That's every yeah. Saturday morning at 8, 8.15, um, pack up the tent, go down there, and you know get ready for a lot of opinions about what you're doing. <laughs> what was some of the feedback you got early on? Uh, it was a mix. It was, you know, it's not strong enough. It's, you know, it needs to be sweeter. It, it was a lot. When we first started, it was a lot of, it doesn't taste sweet or it doesn't taste like mm-hmm. anything, you know? And so we're like, okay, like so yes, it has no sugar and it just yes, like, <laughs> this yeah. is not the drink for you. I don't think, uh, but now, I mean, it's kind of, we were a little bit early on that wave, but now, I mean, that's like the standard. It's like, Oh, there's no sugar. Okay, great. We don't want sugar. So it's yeah. like now we're getting onto store shelves really nicely and having really good velocity through our accounts because now this is what people are looking for. We were just a touch early, but you know, now we're really coming into it. So what did you find from the, the farmer's market? Um, did you find, okay, this is viable, then we're going to order 10,000 bottles? Like, were people just selling through or you're like, you know what, people, we're going to gather the feedback and we're just going to, you know, create a larger batch? So we ordered the bottles. Like, that was the first thing I did. Really? <laughs> I, got, I got a friend to do labels, order the bottles. They showed up in my driveway. I was like, oh my God, this is, ten, this is what 10,000 bottles looks like. You know, I had an idea, but... Uh, it's much bigger than I thought. We had a tarp on that in our driveway for probably at three months. But wow. um, yeah, we just got to go for it, you know. Um, but for us, that's 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 what we did. Yeah. That's so how. now you have the product. How did you get it into stores? So our first break was the school district. So they saw us at like a really small local grocery store. And they were like, you know, kids need something healthy. We're transitioning off sugar, off sweetened drinks. We have no options for kids to drink, and we think kids would like this. So 
after that, we were we started to think that this might actually have some legs. Um, so from there, we did self distribution, self manufacturing for about a year, um, just because you know we wanted to find a manufacturer that would hold to our values, right? We really wanted to use real ingredients, purees and juices. We didn't want natural flavors. It needed to be pasteurized. We're using real ingredients, so it took us a while to find a good co-packer match. Um, and so in March of this year, we got our first co-packer mm. run that we were happy with. You know, and from that point, we onboard Kehi and UNFI. We have a bunch of local distributors in Texas, so they start helping get our product out there. Um, and so with Albertsons, which is a great thing for us, we're in about 400 stores now uh, in Texas. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's some of the advantages and disadvantages of, of going into the grocery stores like this so early? Well, the advantages is that, I mean, the number one thing in this business is do you have traction? Like do you does your product have sell-through at the store? Yeah. And so for us to be able to show, hey – you know, this grocery store in Austin sells 70 cases a month of single serve drinks is great, right? Because that's three times as much as their average drink sells. Yeah. And so that's all that matters. Once you prove that, you can get into more stores, you get distributors, you get money. It all kind of flows from do people actually buy this thing and then do they come back and buy it a second time? And we've proven that people do want this, people will buy it, which makes it easier for us to do everything else. I love the um, design and the labels. How did you come up with that? So a friend of mine did our first pass for free, um, and then as we got a little bigger, we started finding individual designers who we liked. And so this designer was from San Francisco. She'd worked on some Starbucks branding, mm. and we kind of were just begged her to help us. And yeah. so we were together with her on That's that. Really cool. Yeah, thanks. And then how do you decide on the the packaging, right? Because it looks, I think they're all glass bottles, right? Yeah. Is that a big, is that a hard decision to make or not a hard decision? You know, because obviously, people can go the plastic route or the glass route. It's probably more expensive for you to go the glass route, I would imagine. It is. It's more expensive and more difficult. Um, yeah. A lot of our competitors do use plastic, but yeah. for us, you know, we're trying to be, we're trying to do a company in a way we think it should be done. And so, first of all, heating plastic we think releases you know releases chemicals, and we don't really want that to be part of what we're doing. We don't want to contribute to the plastic waste that's just piling and piling and piling. And so for us, glass is kind of a natural fit. Um, you can reuse the bottles. You can recycle them. It, it feels better. It tastes better because it's cold in glass and it just kind of fits what we're trying to do. Yeah, for sure. So cucumber lime yeah. is a, a house favorite. What Not was that. the second uh, flavor that you decided to, to create? Our second flavor was lemon ginger. And mm. so for us, we like ginger, you know, and it was just like, it was a nice marrying of flavors. Um, and everyone has some sort of lemon water. Um, and so we started with still water was our first line because we could make that by hand. The sparkling we couldn't do in our kitchen. Um, and so we sold those still waters, that flavor, and then we have a strawberry flavor. And then we had like a seasonal, we do apple sometimes, we do kind of various things for mm. the fourth still flavor. So how often do you come out with new flavors or are you tinkering with with new flavors what's the process for that we're tinkering all the time coming out with new flavors you know it used to be easy when we were in a kitchen now that we have a co-packer and all these federal regulations it's much harder to come out with new flavors which we do you know about once a year mm. but every batch we get from the co-packer every few months we're tinkering we're tweaking we're you know sourcing better ingredients so everything we use is organic but just like finding better farms so we're always iterating little by little hmm. yeah i love it and so what's the role your wife is in the business too with the I sweet water? Business, yeah. Okay, cool. So well, how do you break, how is it working with a spouse? Uh, it's difficult. <laughs> we won't let her watch this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't tune in. Um, I mean, it's difficult. Plus, we have two small children at home, and yeah. so she also stays home with them. Um, and so, you know, I shoulder a lot of it. And, you know, we work with two other people at Sway, too. So they, they do a lot of the work so that we can have, you know, solid family time, which is important to us, too. You know, you can easily get completely consumed by these businesses and starting your own business. And so trying to draw a line in the sand at 530 that, you know, we don't work It's anymore. impossible. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you get better sell-through in the grocery stores? Is there something that helps? Because... Ideally, you just want people to keep buying so they have to keep reordering. That's right. I mean, what's great about CPG is it's pretty formulaic. Like, you're not inventing anything new with how you sell through stores. So for us, sell through at stores are discounts. So 
doing discounts means you get an end cap, you get a special tag, and people are always drawn towards something that's on sale. Yeah. You basically you need to spend money to have sell through, you know, mm-hmm. and drive that first trial. Um, we do tastings at our major accounts, like our fiestas and central markets, to make sure people try the product. And for us, that's the biggest hurdle. Like, it's kind of a new category, something a little different. Just try it; you'll like it. And then we have a customer for life. But it's that getting that first trial that we really focus on. Have you found, Albert, that there's been any, been any unique combinations or uses? Like, you know, people have taken Red Bull and like combined, which is the opposite end of the healthy spectrum than soy water, but. <laughs> But you know they've taken Red Bull and combine it with whatever. Is that have you found any of that with Sway Water? Like they're using it for different things you didn't expect. Totally. I mean, we have a huge market for like parties. So at South by Southwest, we had tons of inquiries for donations for parties, and so people are mixing our water, our sparkling water, with like Tito's vodka and making really cool cocktail combinations because it's like a skinny cocktail that actually tastes like something and tastes good. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it's kind of a new avenue for stores to be in, you know, how we market the product, kind of like reaching a consumer that we do want in the evening, but then also during the day, they're like, hey, you know, I don't really need Tito's in this right now, but I do like this. Right. Water. <laughs> it's <laughs> nine in the morning. I don't need. Yeah, not, not time something. for a Tito's this way, but, you know, just a regular sway would work. So kind of this weird underground culture people making really cool drinks with sway. Yeah. How do you manage both companies? It's and you have two kids and you're married, right? Yeah. It's not an easy uh you look like you're not sleep deprived also. Right hey, now. that's good. I had a good night last night. Okay. You know? <laughs> last last weekend was rough. We had some stomach issues and colds and so, you know. Right. I mean, it is it's difficult. And for me it's just about having a very rigorous schedule. You know, yeah. like five thirty really dropping what we're doing and then picking it back up at eight when everyone's asleep. Just like being really regimented with your time because it's really easy. I mean, before I had kids and a wife, this is just what I did all day long, day, mm-hmm. night. Um, so just being more thoughtful about making sure every hour is spent the best way that it can be spent and just, you know, not surfing red in the middle of the day. Just saying, you know, I'm going to work and th- so I can spend time with my family. And not Do you regiment it certain days for certain companies or certain hours for certain companies? How do you manage the breakdown of, of schedule with that? Yeah. It's, it's certain hours for certain companies. And so we have, you know, specific days and times that the team knows that I'm available. And so stuff that I need to do, we hit in that time that I'm available for different companies. Yeah. What else with Sway Water? Um, milestones or anything that you think people would be interested in knowing behind the, the brand? Um, so uh, that's interesting. Um, so for milestones for us, it's sales milestones. So we're, we're you know we're looking for that we haven't hit it yet, but we're looking for the million and trailing twelve revenue. Um, so that's kind of our, our next big revenue milestone. And for us, you know, if we when we sell that much, that's an incredible amount of units. You know, you think about selling at our price, we just sell maybe a million and a half units, which is logistically a lot of work. You know, so you look at yeah. companies, oh they're they're doing well, and you say okay they sold. 10,000 units or 100,000 units, you're like, well, yeah, we sell that in a month. But for us to actually logistically move 100 pallets here and there, yeah. you know, because that's that's so far from how we started. And we're not beverage people. We're, we're learning as we go. And so, you know, that's our next big milestone for Sway. Um, another the cool thing has just been interest from people I wouldn't expect to be interested. So, for example, um, Pusha T, who is the president of Kanye West record label, hmm. uh, he we reached out and we got together and now he's like our cultural director and an investor mm. and we go see him in shows and you know it's kind of cool because these people are reaching out saying hey this brand looks really hot like how can we be involved what can we do and it's it's just it's, it's a cool thing you know that yeah. something that you created someone thinks it's interesting enough to approach you and say hey we want to be involved what can we do and we're saying we're microscopic we're in we're in so few stores our revenue is so small but you know, it's cool to have they see the potential and where we can go and just gathering as many people as we can to help us succeed as we get to be bigger and bigger. How did you come up with the name? Sway Water. I really yes. like it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, originally, it was 
we had different words on the bottle that kind of made you feel a certain way. And so that kind of, that fell off because the flavors got to be, no one understood what was in it. Um, but the kind of the idea behind it has been the same, you know, cucumber kind of makes you feel refreshed. Lemon ginger gives you a little bit of energy. And so like each flavor kind of, depending on your mood, there's a different sway for it. Um, hmm. it's kind of like sways your mood. Got it. Yeah. I like that. And I want you to talk about, um, I'm going to shift gears for a second from sway water to um, you've had some major accomplishments in uh, the Big Brother program. Mm -hmm. So t how did you get involved with that and, and what do you do? Sure. So um, part of me is uh, I, I love giving back. Um, my father's a Lutheran minister, so it's kind of like in my body to just, you know, make sure it's, it's not all used in your DNA. I can't, I can't get away from it, right? Um, and so I, I worked in the food pantry for five years here, running the food pantry. Mm. Um, and so Big Brothers Big Sisters was just an organization that I really believe in the mission. Um, my wife teaches before we had kids. She taught in like the east side of Austin, which is a little bit, you know, it's like an up and coming rougher area. It's mm. um, so like seeing how her students struggled through everyday life was just, you know, something that I could help with. And so I joined Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I was a big mentor for three or four years and now I'm on kind of the junior board. Um, I was big brother of the year last year. Um, and so just, it's been a cool opportunity to, cause you let someone play with the Derek Rose game. That's why you get me. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's cool. Like being able to be an advocate for an organization, helping recruit other tech people to see that there's more than just this startup you're trying to build. Just like, yeah. you know, instill that and in, instill those values in other people so that they can come up as well. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff do you do with Big Brother? Um, how does it work for people who don't know? Yeah, so as a mentor, what you do is you're paired up with a student who's typically from 7 up through 17. Mm. Um, and all you're really required to do is spend about an hour every two weeks with them, hour mm. two hours. And so some of the activities we did, we went, you know, um, indoor skydiving, we'd go play some basketball, we'd go just eat dinner, go see a movie, really anything because you're, you're kind of that person who is there for them that's not in their family that can kind of hear what they're struggling with, can give them you know, advice that mm. is maybe outside of what their mom is going to tell them to do. You know, because mm. as a teenager, you have problems you don't want to ask your mom about, right? And if you don't like have Like anything. Yeah, no. it really, anything besides, you know, helping with this home. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, it's good that they have a positive influence. You know, a lot of times the people they look for to advice are maybe not the best people to give them advice. On Is what it they someone doing. who doesn't have a male figure in their life or what's the, how do they choose if someone's going to be in the big brother program? Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times it is something like that. So maybe the father is incarcerated or it's passed on or something like that. And then mm -hmm. there's a lot of gang influence. And so just helping say, Hey, you know, there's another path. Let me show you what it's like. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot we work at UT a lot, and where we'll go and we'll have the kids go see what a college group looks like, what mm -hmm. a classroom looks like, you know, different career paths. Because a lot of times, you don't know what they're going to do for their career. You know, they don't know what options are they're available. They're probably not maybe thinking about their career that much. Yeah, they're just they're trying to really survive, right? And so say, hey, after you survive, you, you've got to do something, right? And so yeah. just saying, hey. You can be an auto mechanic. That's a great career. Here's here's how that works. And so just kind of helping them get to that next phase of their life where they're not a kid anymore. Just helping yeah. them get. Yeah. So the, from the food pantry side of things, what kind of things did you see that touched you in the food pantry? Because it seemed like you were there for a number of years. You probably get to know the people coming in a bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it just gets you – like when you see the same people week after week, you know, and the ones that are that are really struggling for a long time, like their illnesses or just kind of bad luck, but they can't just quite turn that corner, mm. you know. They have lots of they have kids maybe that all come in the pantry and they're just, you know, how they're so appreciative of just having a bag of food to eat. You know, like yeah. most of us take for granted that we can go to the grocery store and buy some organic kale, right? Yeah, but yeah. a whole other group First of world have, problems. Yeah, or starving for like a bag of beans that, you know, right. they can't afford to buy. And so just being able to, to just reassess my life and say, hey, I've got problems with this guy. He's got problems. And I'm ha glad that I can help him through his day. Right. You know, it's kind of reframing how we It's face. heartbreaking, I mean, to see that, you know, I think. Encouraging. Like, you know, people try to get better. And if you can give them a little hand up and then to see people say, 
the greatest thing was seeing them kind of graduate from the pantry and come back and volunteer to help other people. Really? Like, that's great. It's like you, you've yeah. now made it, have your own apartment, and now you're like, I want to help that next guy get to be where I am. And so that makes you feel like you're, you're making a little difference to someone. How did that happen for them? That they, um, tr- they actually, and that's a huge change. Finding a job, really. Like finding a company yeah. that's willing to hire someone that may have a felony or may, you know, have a hard time getting to work or needs to take the bus or may not be dressed the nicest, but you know, that, that can do work. And so once you find a job, it kind of enables you to get an apartment and start living a life, you know? Yeah. That's awesome, Albert. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and you also do work with uh, Latinitas and that's a nonprofit magazine. What is that about? How yeah, did you so get involved? They, they do education for Latina girls. Um, a lot of STEM stuff and computer training. And so for me, I was there, the tech member of the board. So How did helped. you get involved with them? Did you know someone? I knew someone else on the board, and yeah. they were looking for someone to help them do their technology lessons, so like a lot of Scratch programming, the Scratch programming language MIT did, um, and just getting Latina girls to see other career paths as well. Like mm. say, hey, you can be a scientist, you can be a computer programmer, and here is like a little taste of what that looks like. And so that was a really, it was like similar to other stuff, but just excited to see Latina girls say, I can, be a, I can be a programmer, this isn't that hard, and see them make little games and kind of bring their point of view to you know, the game culture that's primarily white men. It's kind yeah. of exciting. Yeah. Albert, thank you. This has been super interesting. I really appreciate your time. Everyone should check out swaywater.com and bohemian.cc. Um, and last question, Albert. Um, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, What's been the lowest point um, in business? And then what has been the proudest moment, highest point for you? That's a good question. Um, For me, some of the lowest points were kind of early on, you know, and one of my mentors told me something really great when I was starting out. They said, you know, when you're starting to get tired is when you're close, Mm -hmm. you know, When you have a bunch of energy and you're feeling great, it's really easy to keep going. It's when you start to really get burned out and kind of feel like, you know, do I want to do this? That means that means that you're close, you know. So for years of doing Bohemian, I was living on friends' couches and doing nothing, right? And then you just say, like, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Uh, You know, and then just kind of persisting through that and then kind of hitting that point where you know, you get one good client, you get another good client, and then saying, okay, like, I think we've, we've crossed that corner to where I'm ready to just say, forget all this. Um, so yeah, definitely some low moments early where, you know, I'm broke, borrowing money from my aunt, just saying, please give me money for payroll so I can keep going. Yeah, um, yeah those are some, those are some rough times. Did me. you, um, how did you get that entrepreneurial bug? Have you always had it from growing up? I guess so. I don't know. It may be just a little bit of arrogance. I worked I worked after I graduated. Um, I have a master's in uh, mechanical engineering, and so that was my path. I was going to be an engineer. Right. I worked at a product development company doing electric scooters, and after a year, I was like, man, you know, it's really hard working for this guy that I think that I'm smarter than, you know? And so for me, it was like, well, put up or shut up. Either, you know, you do this and you prove that you can do it, or you right. just, you know, just keep working. Um, so I guess I've always had it. <laughs> didn't didn't realize it until I started working and realized I didn't like it. So proudest moment, entrepreneurial. Yeah, proudest for me. I mean, there's been a couple, but recently for Sway Water, you know, creating something from nothing is really hard. And so when we, my wife and I, walked into Central Market by our house, like a grocery store that we have been shopping at for years, and then seeing someone drinking the product, just mm-hmm. like a random. Person. Like we call it seeing a sway in the wild. Every time we see a sway in the wild, we all text each other. Yeah. And so, like for me, the first time I saw that was it's cool because you're like, man, I created this by my own hands and have watched it grow from nothing. And now this random person I don't know is enjoying this product that I've worked so hard to make. So that yeah. that's a really cool, a really cool thing. I mean, I know it's not like I didn't sell the company for a hundred million dollars yet, but just that little that yeah. little way where you're saying, okay, like I think we're on the right path. Was that's time. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll have to uh, have you see some in the wild in Chicago. <laughs> Almost. Uh, We're so close. People can buy it online from SwayWater.com, right? Yep, you can yeah. buy it online. Very cool. So everyone check it out, SwayWater.com, Bohemian.cc. Albert, I want to be the first one to thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you very much. I had fun. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. What do 